bin Laden warned three weeks ago that they would carry out a huge and unprecedented attack on U.S. interests. So there was apparently that warning three weeks ago. Just before we move on, where is that coming from? Was that UP, AP? Uh, uh, this is the Associated Press. Associated Press. Press. And it, okay. It's a London-based journalist who got that threat three weeks ago. We should point out probably that those are the kinds of threats, the kinds of uh, bluster that reporters in who cover this area get all the time. In this case, he said he didn't take it seriously at the time because he gets them all the time, and it was so unspecific. But uh, obviously, it's given more credence now. Right. Jim Hoffer, standing by. He has an update for us. Jim, come in, please. I can speak louder, Jim. <laughs> we're we're going to wait for him because I see that he is ready to go. Jim, go ahead. Okay, well, obviously, as you understand, we don't, do not have cell phone communication with our uh, folks out in the field. Um, and in fact, even live communication with them sometimes, as you can see, is extremely difficult, in part because so much of our equipment was located on top of the World Trade Center. That equipment obviously gone. Let's go back to Jim. Jim, can you hear us? Well, it is almost uh, almost impossible, really, to describe the enormity of what has happened here uh, today. You can really see it on the faces of the hundreds of people that are walking out of Lower Manhattan. It's an eerie silence. Uh, many of them not even talking. They're really trying to process uh, the enormity of uh, this this apocalyptic tragedy. But among these people, there are plenty of heroes, which we will hear about over the next few days, weeks, and months. And one of them is a gentleman by the name of Chris Magnata. If you can imagine, he was in Tower One when the first plane struck it. He was able to survive coming down 80 floors of stairs, but rather than fleeing to try and protect himself from any further harm, he went back inside to try and rescue other people. Let's listen to what he have to, has to say about that. As you can see, you're rolling? Okay. As you can see behind me, the second and last Move tower of the World back. Trade Tower has just collapsed. It is about 10.30 Eastern time. And the tower has collapsed. We did not hear an explosion. There was no sign telling us previous any kind of warning that the building was going to collapse. The warning for us were people just running in our direction. And that's when we started to get out of the way. It is a scene. You want to open our mics? Okay, obviously that wasn't another eyewitness, another eyewitness that we spoke to down here said that this is an act of war. And with tears in his eyes, he shook his head and he said, but how? He, he pondered how, in fact, could a rogue terrorist group find the, the know-how, the resources, and have the sophistication to pull off something as cataclysmic as, uh, as the collapse of the two trade towers? But indeed they did. And these terrorist groups, whomever they are, changed forever the city skyline and really the city, if not the world. Back to you. All right, Mr. Hoffer, thank you. The questions that you raised, needless to say, will be answered in the days and weeks and months. Absolutely. To come. And, and I have to ask Jim here, Jim, having covered the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, Jim, the investigation on that, how did it progress? How will this investigation progress? Well, keep in mind the World Trade Center explosion was. The explosion was confined to a very small area. In terms of forensic uh, evidence, it was actually pretty easy to solve. They found the one truck inside that World Trade Center that exploded from within and not from without. They traced that truck back to the people who had rented the truck. You'll remember it was a rider van. Uh, they traced it back to them. It was pretty easy to find out the people who, who uh, planted that bomb. This is a much different situation. Obviously, the, uh, the Taliban today saying Osama bin Laden doesn't have the resources to pull something major like this off. But if Osama bin Laden doesn't, who does? Someone certainly pulled it off today. And there had to have been amazing resources to pull this off. You're talking about a number of planes hijacked. There had to have been resources within the airports. There had to have... Hijacked and then flown 
to their targets. Remember, the pilots who were originally on board those aircrafts weren't the ones who flew them into the World Trade Center. Someone with sophistication and know-how how to pilot those aircrafts had to fly them into the towers and then, of course, also into the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. A suicide flyer, obviously. Um, we're joined also in the studio this morning, um, or this afternoon, rather, by Bill Heitman, who was uh, in one of the towers when this happened. And Bill, after after hearing Jim Hoffer and seeing him running um, from the scene there as the, as the building collapsed, I was wondering, as you were trying to get out, you were in the darkened stairwell for an hour, did it ever cross your mind that the building might collapse? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it, it, there was good spirit in the, in the uh, stairwell. We, I mean, I can honestly say we, people were, we, we were having some laughs, you know, we were just getting down, making the best of it. Some people had to, had to, it was more urgent for them to get down, so we would all call out, move to the right, and they would proceed down. But there was no panic, and there was, there was generally, considering the circumstances, good spirit in the stairwell. Again, as you said earlier, it didn't seem to be as bad as the other explosion, the first explosion. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So no clue um, and, and no panic as you were going down. No panic. The, the, the thought of the building collapsing or, or being in any more danger never crossed my mind. And then, Bill, you okay. said it wasn't... Sorry? Uh, Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt because I want to just point out in this live picture here, um, what you're looking at is damage to an adjoining building. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the impact of this, um, not just to those twin tra towers, but also to adjoining buildings. Um, and it looks like there is still, obviously, smoke. And I think I saw some flames there as well, Jim. Yeah. Um, so clearly, there is um, still damage. Well, and they're all well. bunched up so closely together down there, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, there, there was bound to be collateral damage in the, in the neighboring business, yeah, absolutely. businesses. And Absolutely. Um, Bill, as, as you were going down that darkened stairwell, and you say you had no thought that the building might collapse, was that because you had faith in the integrity of the building or simply because you did not know what was going I on? I had no idea the magnitude of the crash above us. We didn't know that there were two. We didn't know anything had happened over in two. We thought it was just us in one. And as, uh, as the further we got down, you figure you're, you're, eight, you're 90 floors away from the worst of it. I figured when we came out into the concourse level of the building that everything would appear to be relatively normal. But when we got down into the, into the concourse level, which is very much like a shopping mall, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just flooded. It was, and, and emergency personnel were very, very urgently trying to get us out of the building. And I so myself- So were people milling around down there trying to check on others in the building? Or no, were as they soon as you came out of the out. stairwell, there was great urgency just personnel just just go that way go that way get out get out get out and everybody was just walking through water sir can you know? i ask you to stand by for just a moment mary johnson on the phone she is with the new york hospital mm -hmm. association and this is the theme that you are going to hear not only throughout this day but for many days to come and that is the urgent need for blood mary you want to talk to us some more about that